Hi there. Today's video is on request, which is why it's again an InDesign video instead of an Illustrator video. This video is about making an architect portfolio, so let's get started. I'm going to select A4 as the size of the portfolio and change the units to millimeters and uh, orientation to landscape. I'm going to have six pages for this illustration, out of which I'm going to use the first page for cover, the last page for the back cover, and the rest for to illustrate the content. I'm going to reduce the margins to 5 millimeters and bleed to 3 before hitting create. First of all, I'm going to delete one of the A master pages by right-clicking on it. Now, I'm going to create two more masters by right-clicking on my A master and then click on new master. From the pop-up window, let's select based on master option to A master. And you'll see what happens when I base my B master to A master. Let me drag this down so that you could see the B master as well. There it is sitting comfortably. So much like we deleted one of the pages of A master, let's delete one page of B master as well by right clicking on it and then deleting it from the drop down menu because we'll just need one page of each master. Let's now create the last master page by right clicking on one of the master pages and select new master. From the pop up window, change based on master to A and you'll find soon enough what happens when we do that and hit OK. Again, delete one of the pages of Master C as well, much like we did for Masters A and B. All right, now the reason why I need to have three master pages is because I'll use Master A for the cover page, Master B for the content pages, and Master C for the back cover. And since there can be only one cover page and back cover, We'll design these two pages on the master and then apply them to the pages. The rest four pages for content will be designed on individual pages. So let's get started with the cover page. At this point, you can see all the pages have A master applied to them and even master B and C have master A settings applied to them. Let's double click on A master and grab the rectangle frame tool and make a frame covering the entire page, including the bleed area. Now go to File and then Place and locate the image from the computer to import it here. My fitting option by default is set to Content Aware Fit, but for this tutorial, I'm going to use Fit Content to Frame option. So to do that, right click on the image and go to Fitting and then select fit content to frame option and you'll find that the image will adjust itself a bit. Let's take you to the pages thumbnail. You see all of our pages at this point reflect the same image we've imported to A master. That's cause all the pages including the two masters B and C have A master applied to them, which we're gonna change in a bit so don't worry about that. Next, let's grab the text tool and make a large text box and type in portfolio because we're making the cover page remember let's change the font to roboto black if you have roboto use it else use any chunky font that's available let's also enlarge the size to about 100 points now take your cursor to the top right corner of the text box and when you see the bi-directional arrow hold shift and rotate it to 90 degrees Holding shift will move the text in 45 degree increments. Now place it to the left side of the page. Select the text and increase the character spacing a bit because I think at this point it's a little tight. Now once you're sure about the size and placement of your text, go to type and select create outlines. Creating outlines will convert your font to shape, which is why be doubly sure about your font before you do this, or you can even make a copy of the text and set it aside in case you want to make changes to your font later. Next, I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle that I'm gonna place my text on. Let's change the fill to black and lower the opacity to 50%. 
With the rectangle selected, hit Shift, Command and left bracket on a Mac or Shift, Control, left bracket on a PC to send this rectangle to the back of the text. It actually moved to the back of the image here. So let's click on the image and use the same command, which is Shift, Command and left bracket on a Mac or Shift, Control and left bracket on a PC and you shall get your rectangle back. Now we need to align the text in the center of the rectangle and we can't just use the alignment option on top because the rectangle is extended to the bleed as well. And we know that the bleed is usually taken off when we print the document. So grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle from the margin to the edge of the rectangle on the right. Now select the text in this new rectangle you've made and click on the rectangle once again to center align the text to this rectangle and click on align horizontal centers option from the alignment panel. Now that the alignment has been taken care of, delete the rectangle that you made as we have no use of it anymore. Let's press W for the preview of our work so far. I think it's looking fine so far. So let's grab the ellipse frame tool and make a circle on the right. We'll be adding the image of the architect this portfolio belongs to. So go to file and then place and locate the image from the computer. Let's adjust the image by clicking on this small circle in the center and dragging the image up a bit. Let's also align the image to the center and we can use the text on the left as the reference as we know it is already aligned properly. So select the image and the text and then click on the text once again and then click on align vertical centers option from the alignment panel on top. Let's add some effects to the image. So for that, right click on the image and go to effects and then outer glow. And from the settings pop up, change the mode to multiply, size to eight millimeters and also change the mode color to black and hit OK. Now grab the text tool and make a text box and type her name. So I'm going to type Sarah Adams as her name. Let's also change the font size to 30 points and font to lobster or any other font of your choice. And then change the font color to white. Let's also add a phone number here. Let's align the text to the image. Now you know how to center align, so I'm not going to repeat myself how to do that. I think the background image is intervening here. I think I should add a rectangle much like I added with the text on the left. So let's grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle covering the text here. Then fill the rectangle with black and lower the opacity to 50%. Now convert the text to outlines by selecting the text and going to type and then click on create outlines and now center align the text to the rectangle behind it. Let's group the image and the text along with the rectangle. To group it, you just need to enter command G on a Mac or control G on a PC and then move it to the right a bit. And there you go. The cover page of the portfolio is ready. When you go to pages panel, you find whatever we've done so far with the cover page has been copied to all the pages and the masters as well. So it's time to fix that. Let's right click on B master here and go to master options for B master. Under based on master, select none from the drop down, meaning that B master will use its own settings. It is not interested in the settings of the A master anymore and then hit OK. The moment you do that, you'll find that B Master is a blank page now. Since we have decided to use B Master with the content pages, let's select the four content pages in between and then right click and select Apply Master to Pages option. At this point, A Master has been applied to these four pages. So from the drop down, let's select B Master and hit OK and you'll find them turning blank as well. Similarly, right click on C master and go to master options for C master and change the based on master to none and hit OK. And remember, we decided to use C master for the back cover. So let's select page six and right click 
and select apply master to pages option and uh, from the pop-up change the apply master to C master and hit OK. So now whatever we do in C master shall automatically be copied to page 6 and whatever we do with B master will be copied to the four content pages in between. So let's begin with the back cover and for that double click on C master Grab the rectangle frame tool and make a rectangle covering the entire page, including the bleed. Then go to file and then place and locate the image from your computer. Now right click on the image and go to fitting and then fit content to frame and the image will adjust itself a bit. Let's grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle on the bottom left corner. We're not going to overcomplicate things here, so we'll use the back cover just for contact details of the social media, so accounts like Facebook or Pinterest or Instagram will come here. Alternatively, you can even add your address or any such content comes here. So let's fill the rectangle with white and reduce the opacity to about half, which is 50%. Also, round the corners of the rectangle using the round corner option on the top. Next, for text, it's best to add a table here. So let's go to table and then create table. From the pop-up menu, let's have four body rows and two columns and hit OK. Now click and drag inside the rectangle to draw the table. We'll need more room on the right for details like our username or email address. So let's click on the border in between and drag it to the left to reduce the size of the first column. Similarly, drag the second column out to have more space in there. And now let's click inside the cell and start typing the details of our social media accounts. Since I don't really have real account names, I'm going to just type in anything. Once you have the text ready, let's change the font to Poppins Black. It's a little too thick, so let's change it to Semi Bold. I think this one is good enough. Let's also show the table panel here, and for that, go to Window, and then type in Tables, and then Table. The shortcut to show the table panel is Shift F9, and that is uh, for both Mac and PC. At this point, the table panel is grayed out because we haven't selected any text in the table. So to enable it, select the text and the panel will come alive. Let's select all in our table and center align them to the cell. We don't really want these lines to be visible. So for that, with the text selected, go to the stroke option on top and select none. You see this grid preview on top has blue lines all around but black lines inside. So let's hit W to see how it looks. Well you see the borders around are gone but the divisions inside are still there because we needed to have blue lines inside as well in the thumbnail so let's click on the black lines to turn them blue and go to the strokes panel once again and click on none and the lines will be gone. I think there's a lot of space on the right that we need to reduce, so let's click and drag the table in to reduce the space, and then drag the rectangle in as well. Perhaps we need to reduce the line spacing as well, so let's select the text, and from the table panel, reduce the leading to about 11 millimeters. Also reduce the size of the rectangle here and place it properly to the corner. And one last thing to do here is to add a line between the names and the addresses. So grab the line tool and holding shift drag to draw a line as illustrated. Change the stroke point to 1. I think 1 should be fine. And change the stroke color to black. And now center align the line and let's hit W now to see how it looks. I think our back cover is ready now, so let's move on to our content. Alright, for the content, we'll have to work on the individual pages, except that I want all my content pages to have a background color, and that's something I can achieve by adding a background to the B Master. 
So let's double click on the B master to select it and then grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle covering the entire page, including the bleed. Now let's go to one of the pages with image. It could be a master page or otherwise, because I'd want the background color to be a shade of one of my images here. Once you click on the color theme tool, it will populate the colors of the image in a palette like this. And now you can pick any color and drop it to the rectangle. So let's go to our B master once again and click to choose the color from the palette and drag it to the rectangle to copy the color. And since it's too dark for the background color, I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 30%. And you can see how all my content pages got filled with the same color just by adjusting my B master. So now I'm going to go to page two and grab the rectangle frame tool and make a square. If you hold shift and drag, it will increase uniformly from both sides, making it a square instead of a rectangle. Now I can either use straight images in place here, but it's going to be too boring. So let's pick the white arrow or the direct selection tool and holding shift, select the two corners on the right and then drag this side down as illustrated. Now to copy it, hold option on a Mac or alt on a PC and drag it down. Let's make another copy the same way. So we should have for three images, three frames on the left. And uh, let's drag them a little more to the inside of the page. I think we need we need more space in between the squares. So let me drag just the bottom one down. Now select all three and from the alignment option on top, select distribute vertical centers and the distribution between them will have equal spacing. Now let's go to file and then place and locate the images on your computer. Once your cursor is loaded with all three images, just click on each shape once to load the image. I can then right click on my images and go to fitting and select fit content to frame option. At this point, let's hit the W key to check the preview. Let's also use a divider between them. So pick the line tool and draw a line in between them and change the stroke to one point. Now copy this line by holding option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and dragging it down. Let's make the lines two points instead of one. It will look much better. So select them both holding Shift and change the stroke width from the toolbar above to two points. Now let's draw a vertical line to separate this uh, entire panel of images. Adjust the lines to touch the bleed mark. You'll have to use the direct selection tool for this. Let's add some text now. So grab the text tool and make a text box and type in project one. I'm going to use the font Xylem for this one. Use any decent font for the heading. You don't have to have the same fonts I'm using in this illustration. Let's increase the font size to about 72 points. I think I'll use this text on the other page. So let me move this text box here. Let me copy this text box here. I'm sure you know by now how to copy a shape or text. So I'm not going to repeat myself. I'll update my text to title of work. So whatever your project name is, you can enter here instead of writing title of work and then reduce the size to about 36 points. Let's make another copy of this text box. Also, I'd like to add a guide here to have the details a little indented. Now change the text to project spec, short for project specifications and lower the text size further down to 18 points. Now I'm going to make another text box here and before releasing the mouse button, hit the right arrow key and your box will have two columns. Now click to select the box and then right click and select fill with placeholder text option to fill it with some text. Let's also change the font to Poppins light and size to 12 points. 
Since my text is looking too busy, what I'm going to do is divide it into paragraphs for it to look presentable. Let's add a stroke before my headings here to give it an effect and uh, change the stroke weight to 5 points. And using the color theme tool, change the color to dark brown, something that matches our image. So you see, until this point, all of our color scheme has been pertaining to the colors of the image we've used in the tutorial for the sake of uniformity. Let's adjust the size of this line here and shorten it a bit. At every stage, you can hit W to check the preview of your work. Also, another important thing is that the text columns you've made should have equal spacing on both sides from the edge of the page or from a prominent design that is taking the space of the page We'll come back to these three images in some time for now. Let's move on to the next page and make the first letter of our heading uppercase. To establish the center of this page, grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle from margin to margin. Please don't include the bleed space in this because the bleed gets chopped off during printing anyway. Now drag a guide and drop in at the center of this rectangle and then center align our heading text box based on the guide and then delete the rectangle because its job is done now next grab the rectangle frame tool and draw a rectangle and then go to file and then place and locate the image on your computer now right click on the image and go to fitting and select fit content to frame the space on both sides of the image looks fine because I've center aligned my image to the guide anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's check the preview of our first project here. I think we need to add an effect to the images here. So select all three images together and then right click and go to effects and then bevel and emboss. Change the style to pillow emboss. Update the highlights to multiply and size to 4 millimeters. Also change the highlight color to black. I think let's change the size to 3 millimeters because 4 millimeters is a little too big. And hit OK. So our project 1 is complete. For this tutorial, I'm using just two projects just to give you an idea how to make them because I'll design project 2 slightly differently than project 1. And in the real life situation for a portfolio, I'm sure you'd need to add a lot of projects so you can mix and match the design concepts. And that's one of the reasons I won't copy and paste the text I have in project one. We'll be using paragraph styles now. So let's go to window and then styles and select paragraph styles from there. So there are two ways you can use paragraph styles. The first way is that you select the text wherein you've already set the font, the size, the style, whether it's bold or italics or underlined, etc. And then just add a new paragraph style by clicking on the create a new style button and renaming your style. So I'm going to click on it and rename it main heading and my style is created. And this is the preferred option as well. The second option is that you do not have any text selected. You just click on the create a new style button and rename it to a name of your choice and make necessary adjustments to your style from the settings option that I'm going to show you in some time. And then you can apply the styles to your text wherever you want to. Let's highlight our title of work text here and add it to the paragraph style and double click on the left of the paragraph style one option and it will open the settings here rename it to heading and you will see all these options on the left these are the various options you can set your text style to but since we've already styled our text we don't need to do anything here so just hit OK similarly select the subheading and create a new style for it and then lastly, select our content text and create a style for it and rename it text. Now our paragraph styles are done and we'll use them for project two so that you know how to use them and also learn how useful they are, particularly when you have repeated text to type. So let me give you a demo here. You see our project one has the main heading style applied to it. The moment I click on heading, 
the style of our heading, which is title of work, gets applied to it. Similarly, click on subheading style and the subheading style will be applied to it. So it's that simple and you don't have to select the text, just the text box selection is good enough. So let's get our main heading style back to project one before moving on to project two. For the plan image, let's just copy the image and text using command C on a Mac and control C on a PC and then come to page four and do a command V on a Mac or control V on a PC to paste it here and then center align it and change the name of project to project two. Now let's come to page five and we'll add four images of the project here. So let's grab the ellipse frame tool and make a circle and place it on the left side of the page, leaving some space. Now I'm going to show you how you can set spacing on both sides. We didn't do it for page two earlier because our images were placed vertically then. So let's pick the rectangle tool and make a rectangle from the partition where both pages meet to the edge of the plan image on page four. So now we know the spacing on page four and we'll apply the same spacing on page five for the sake of uniformity. So place the same rectangle to the edge where the pages meet and then move the circle to the point where the other side of the rectangle falls. Now drag a guide from the ruler and drop it at this point and take the same rectangle to the other side of the page and match its side to the margin of the page excluding the bleed and then drop a guide to the other side of the rectangle. Make a copy of the circular frame and place it touching the guide on the right. Make two more copies of the frame and place them side by side. Don't worry about their alignment yet. Now select them all and then select the first frame to base the alignment on and then click on align bottom edges option from the alignment panel above and all your circles will be aligned to one line. Now click on distribute horizontal centers and the circles will have same spacing between them. Now with all the circular frames selected, go to file and then place and locate the image on your computer. Once your cursor is loaded with all the four images, click on each frame to drop the images one by one. With all of them selected, right click on any one image and go to fitting and select fit content to frame option and all the images will adjust themselves. With the images still selected, right click and go to effects and then bevel and emboss let the style be inner bevel this time and uh, highlight be multiply and change its color to black and hit OK. Next, pick the text tool and make a text box and type in title of work. So here you need to add the name of your project to instead. And where did our paragraph styles panel go? Anyway, let's go to window and then styles and click on paragraph styles to show it. And since this is our heading, just click on heading once and it will copy the style instantly. Now copy this text box and change its text to project specs. And from the paragraph style option, change the style to subheading. For the stroke we prefixed our headings with, let's just go to page two and copy it and then paste it here and align it to the guide on the left and then align our headings properly and now add another guide at the edge of the headings and then another one a little inside probably two to three millimeters inside much like we did with the text on page two next grab the text tool and make a text box from the newest guide we created to the guide on the right and before releasing the mouse button hit the right arrow twice because we need three columns this time now take your cursor to the first column and click on it once and then right click and fill it with placeholder text. Now select all using command A on a Mac or control A on a PC and select the text style from the paragraph styles option. Now much like earlier make paragraphs out of the text to make it look presentable. And there you go your portfolio is ready. Now that you've learned how to make the portfolio, you can make custom changes as per your requirement. 
Like in our instance for project one, I place the content first and then the project plan. But for the second project, I place the plan first and then the content. So you can alternate it like this or you can go the traditional way. It's up to you. Also, if you want to add pages to add more projects, all you need to do is go to the pages panel and you see this small plus button at the bottom of the panel. Just click to add pages or use the delete or backspace button to remove pages. You can even click on the trash icon to delete pages. So take your pick. All right, guys. So that concludes our session today. I hope you've enjoyed it and have learned something new from it. So do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet on Sunday, goodbye and thanks for watching.